10% advantage from the field for Seattle. Notice the fast break points. Notice the bench points difference with these two. The starters out there right now to begin the second half. Durant, who fumbles it away right there with Thomas, Wilcox, Wilkins, and Watson. And for the Boston Celtics, Allen, Garnett, Pierce, Rondo at the point guard, and Kendrick Perkins up front. Normally, good teams will try to come out of at halftime and have a great third quarter. So I think if Seattle's going to win this game, Kevin, they have to win this quarter and give themselves a little bit of a cushion. Boston is going to try to make a push right now. And Garnett with the miss outside. Now the Celtics going back to the late stages of the first half have missed nine of their last ten shots from the floor. Wilkins to Watson. Watson to Wilcox. Inside around KG. Backed away and kept alive. Wilcox got a hand on it offensively. Well, multiple shots. That's what you have to do. Chris Wilcox got to be more aggressive. He should be a great offensive rebounder. He's working into Perkins here with a little fake. And the miss. And out of bounds. We talked about offensive See, rebounds. he's really out of sync, Chris Wilcox. If he doesn't get any layups and dunks early, it's like he sort of gets lost in the offense. And right now, they need him. They need him to score in that low post. Celtics went the first 21 minutes before committing their only turnover in the first half. They've got one. Here is Garnett over Watson. And the rebound by Damian Wilkins, the son of Gerald Wilkins. And related, of course, is uncle Dominique Wilkins. Oh, look at the drive by Wilcox. Accelerates by the big ticket. That's what I'm talking about. That's what he does. Use your quickness. Go to the rim. That's the Seattle's first lead of the night. But you do it with your speed, your quickness, and your power. Don't be a finesse player in there for Chris Wilcox. It's Ray Allen working inside now as they double him down low. Perkins couldn't find it. Shot clock has worked its way down to five. Over Thomas. It's Garnett and Thomas all to the shot. And here comes Durant the other way. He's 4 of 11. Watson with it. He's got four points in 13 minutes. Well, Austin's really out of sync offensively. They're, they're not getting any easy baskets during the half court shooting. All jump shots. The drive by Watson. And you said this third quarter means a lot for both these teams, especially Boston. Well, Boston, this is you know, good teams like to make a push here. And Boston has been very good in the third quarter this year. Now, last night they weren't. They got outscored 27 to 13. But look in the previous 10 games. Uh, you know what they were able to do plus seven points a game in the quarter last night they get outscored by 14 so this is why I said I think Seattle has to win this quarter and be leading going into the fourth quarter because they don't have the finishers yet guys who know how to close games here's Allen trying to go inside Watson knocked it away 16 on the shot clock and DA what do you have over there well, guys, the Sonics uh, were very pleased with their bench, obviously, in the first half, but their key to the second half is Kevin Garnett. They are not going to do much doubling. Expect to see a lot of Kurt Thomas on them down the stretch, one-on-one. -on -one. They can win that matchup. They think they have, or at least slow them down. They think they have a good chance to win this game, guys. I, 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 I like, yeah, I like that because I think, I think Garnett is a reluctant scorer, and you don't want to free up the three-point shooting just like that, the yep. inside-outside with Pierce. <laughs> and the last night, the reason that Boston won that game, they were plus 27 points from the three-point line. You don't want Garnett to be able to get those shooters on the perimeter. Durant, he knocks in a three and matches Pierce, who is coming out for the closeout on that shot. And Seattle still on top by one with nine and a half to play here in the third. At home, the Sonics are 4 9. On the road, the Celtics are 9 and 2. Rondo, he's got the green light to shoot outside, a better mid range jump shooter than a three point shot. Missing right there, rebound by Thomas. Watson. Oh, Thomas, he can hit that shot. It's up right there. Wilcox looking for the offensive rebound and picked up by Ray Allen. Now, P.J. told us before the game, Kurt Thomas really has not found his shooting touch this year. A lot of it, I think, due to that leg injury early in the year where he missed a lot of the uh, time, 10 games for that hamstring. Wilcox is watching Perkins. Out of bounds, shot clock at six seconds. The, the ball is sticking tonight with Boston. I don't see the crisp movement. I, I don't see them playing the way I've seen them play on television this year. And give Seattle some credit. They, they've gotten back. Uh, they have not turned the ball over to give them easy scores. And they're making Boston play in a half court. And they're defending the three-point line. It's Garnett with the aggressive try. Down the lane. It's a foul on Kurt Thomas. Counted for two for the big ticket, who's got 16. On the drive inside the lane, that shot was hit with two seconds remaining on the shot clock. See, I think if you make Garnett score, even if he penetrates like that, the fans here are not happy with that call. They felt Kirk Thomas had got there. I thought he was sliding a little bit over as Garnett tried to jump away from him. 
But when Garnett penetrates and you make him score, don't let him kick out to the three-point shooters, sort of put it on him to throw up a big night and try to keep defensively Ray Allen and Paul Pierce under wraps is what they did in the first half when those two guys were five for 20. Doug, you talked about this to begin the game, but there were a couple days off that Doc Rivers gave his team over the holidays. The first time back was against Sacramento last night. Uh, when you miss a couple days in the NBA, it can take its toll. Oh, well, these guys are so, you know, conditioned to play every other night or whatever, and they're just a little out of sync right now. It's the holidays of travel on the road, four games in five nights. This is really the first test going out on the road and playing. Double team, Durant, and a foul as he does a corkscrew move inside, and Paul Pierce was defending on the play, and Pierce picks up his first personal foul. So take a look at Doc Rivers. Doug mentioned this earlier, won the NBA Coach of the Year award with Orlando when he took a team with a bunch of no-names to a 41-41 and 41 record. Eventually let go there. He's had a couple of tough seasons in Boston. Hired by Danny Ames. Uh, and now really enjoying what is as talented a lineup as you're going to find in the NBA. Well, the thing you, you are happy about with Doc Rivers is when you have to go through all that losing, that you get an opportunity to now finally kind of coach his team that has a chance to win. And, you know, he was your partner in the broadcast booth. There's no better guy than Doc Rivers. And to see him have this success really is great for him and the Boston Celtics. It's nice to see them relevant once again yes. when you talk about NBA teams. It used to be you didn't even talk about the Celtics for about 10 years. Ray Allen with the miss. He's now 3 of 10. Pierce is 3 of 12. So the big gun shooting are combined, what, 6 of 22. That's a missed shot from outside. Watson yeah. missing. I don't like that shot. Earl Watson can get that at any time. You know, he's got a little bit of an itchy finger right now. Delonte West played well, so he's trying to get his name in the books. Good point. Here's Garnett drawing a double. What a great pass. Kendrick Perkins could not hold on to it inside. Watson knocks it away. The second Boston turnover. Durant for three. Rebound by Kevin Garnett. Eats it up off the glass. He's got eight rebounds and 17 points. Allen open three. Good. Right between the eyes. Bray Allen from outside for the Celtics. You think these Seattle fans are conditioned of him making that shot twice now? He's caught the ball wide open. And these Seattle fans knew he was not going to miss either one of them. Wilkins got a screen from Thomas. Works around this match in Rondo. The rebound by Garnett. Can you feel a momentum change here, maybe? Well, I, give me a couple more possessions here, but you can see Boston is trying to make a little push here. Ray Allen actually got away with a walk. And Allen now with the drive. And the two defending Seattle Supersonics, and Thomas knocked it away with 12 seconds on the shot clock. Here's that three by Ray Allen moments ago. Well, twice we've seen him get out in the open court, either off a block shot or a steal or in transition. Both times he knocked down those open threes. He, He's going to shoot about 80% on those kind of open jump shots. He's number two all time in three point shots made in the history of the NBA and back of TNT's Reggie Miller. Screen by Garnett. Over Thomas. Another three, this time authored by Paul Pierce. And now that momentum does have a feel to it. That's what those threes do. Last night against Sacramento, they hit six threes in the third quarter when they broke that game open. 6 0 run here, and PJ Carlissimo feels the game changing here as the Boston Celtics have gone up six. So Paul Pierce from outside is only four of 13 tonight, but hits this triple right here for 17 on the night over the defending Kurt Thomas, and the Celtics living on that three, up by six on TNT. The NBA on TNT brought to you by Dodge. Live life to the fullest. Dodge, grab life. And by T-Mobile, the official wireless partner of the NBA. T-Mobile, stick together. Our house is a house of thoughtfulness and kindness. If I'd have known you still had a Jerry Curl, I never would have invited you. Put your hand up, man. You're dripping juice all on my chest. Don't miss new episodes of Tyler Perry's House of Pain. Two full hours, Wednesday at 9, right here only on TBS. Well, Doug, we know how Boston is getting back in this game. They're hitting a couple threes, and Allen and Pierce are getting hot. What has happened to Seattle's offense? Well, the team they have on the floor, really, other than Kevin Durant, and no one is going to score. I mean, Wilcox is struggling, and Wilkins is struggling, so if those guys aren't going to score, Earl Watson's really not a score, or it's Kurt Thomas, so really the onus then goes on Durant. So, I mean, P.J.'s going to have to really keep an eye on this lineup. 
he doesn't want to let this lead get into eight or ten points. It's going to be tough for them to play uphill. So, and I would expect in the next couple of minutes, he might have to go to that bench and bring either Zerbiak or Delonte West to get some offense on the floor. Here is Durant from outside, and the Sonics had missed the last four up until that hit right there for two from Kevin Durant, who's got a Seattle high 15. And now the Sonics dug three of 11 from the field in this third quarter. And it's Durant. He's the guy who has to score. Garnett is screen. Pierce missing inside. Look at Garnett. Reel in the rebound. Fouled on the play. Kurt Thomas got him. And Kevin Garnett will go to the free throw line again with his 17 points and 11 rebounds. That's the second foul called on Kurt Thomas. And KG at the free throw line. Raised in. South Carolina, senior in high school in Chicago. If he was going to go to college, it would have been to the University of Michigan. Opted for the NBA, and it was a big deal. He was in the cover of SI, going right from high school to the pros. Go to the expanded TNT overtime on NBA.com for more on Doug's analysis of the Sonics and Kevin Durant. TNT overtime on NBA.com, where you can get TNT NBA Thursday seven days a week. And how about uh, Kevin Garnett, though, and Ray Allen? They actually knew each other in South Carolina in high school. Uh, Ray Allen was an Army brat, moved around a lot, and uh, he and uh, Kevin played ball down uh, together in South Carolina and then actually was drafted by Minnesota. It looked like he was going to be a teammate, but was traded for Marbury, so it took him a lot of years to finally get together. Durant into Pierce. Rebound by Kurt Thomas, who is whacked inside and fouled. Garnett and Perkins were in there. Looked like Kendrick Perkins is in his fifth year. He went out of high school, too. He's from Beaumont, Texas, is Kendrick Perkins. He picks up number one. Well, this is what Durant does. He's getting better at Kevin. We saw him early in the year. He was shooting a lot of jump shots. Now he's starting to mix up his game a little bit. Drive the ball to the basket, get some layups, get out on the break which he's done so very well, shoot the open shot, start getting to the free throw line a little bit more, and then the game becomes a lot easier for you. And then what happens is when you drive, you create a lot of attention. Now all of a sudden, Kurt Thomas gets an offensive board, or Wilcox does, and now those guys can help you uh, by finding some easy baskets. We've had the benefit, Doug, of watching him at different stages. In October, we saw him in Bakersfield, California, night uh, number two in the NBA here. And then a couple of months later, here we go, seeing him again. How have you charted his progress? I think he's adjusting well to the speed of the NBA game, to the physicality. I think he's taking good care of himself. It looks like he's still fresh and pretty sharp for a guy who's uh, relatively thin. But he's just going to continue to get better and better, especially you just got to stay healthy, Kevin. The switch on defense. Thomas could not get over and cover Garnett in time with a second left on the shot clock. Good defense by Seattle. And here comes... Kevin Durant with four rebounds and a Seattle high 15. Wilkins is one of four. Got a Thomas screen. Shot clock is down to six. Durant working on Pierce. Rondo with a good looking rebound around Watson. Like Rondo running this team? Well, he's, he's learning. I, the, the one thing right now, he's going to become more aggressive right now. He's got to look to get to the rim like that, maybe get to the foul line. <laughs> As the words come out, that's exactly what he does. You know, he's, he can't just be out there looking to distribute and stuff because you don't want to be able to just run off of him. He's got to be a threat, and he's shown flashes of being able to get in the lane and do some things, but, uh, you know, he, he's got to be able to, to give them some offense. He cannot be a liability to where you're playing four on five out there and you, and you force him to just have to make shots at the end of the shot clock. Watson picked up his first foul. Posey comes in for Perkins. That's the change on the Boston lineup. And here's Rondo at the line. A lot to ask, though, of his second-year player with guys like Garnett and Allen and Pierce. But that's a lot of responsibility on this young point guard's shoulders. Well, I think that was a lot of the questions coming in with for Boston. How good was their point guard situation? Could Rondo do that? Could Kendrick Perkins give them what they needed on that front line to go next to Garnett? And then what were they going to get off their bench? Was their bench going to be able to give them enough so that the three older players, the stars, wouldn't have to play too many minutes during the course of the year and get worn down before the playoffs? Thomas a screen. Watson finds Wilkins. We said 104, missing a three right there. Rebound easily collected by Paul Pierce. 
Well, Damian Wilkins is, is really lost a lot of confidence offensively. Pierce for that little foul line jump shot. But, I mean, Damian Wilkins in Atlanta this year in front of his uncle and his father had 41 points. And since that point in time, he has really struggled. And they need him uh, to give some offense. And here's Raleigh Zerbiak coming in and Delonte West. I think P.J. Carlismo feels the same thing I do right now. A game high 19 for Pierce who knocked in that shot at the other end. He is 5 of 15. Wilcox, Garnett, a little winded on the play. It's interesting, Doug, Boston has started all three quarters tonight, four of 13 from the field. And here in the third, Thomas is working on Garnett. Thomas, a good defense. Look at him digging there and on Kevin. And tapped in, uncovered. Where's Posey flying off that baseline? He won a championship with the Miami Heat in 06. Riley really wanted to keep him as we talked about back in the first half. Yeah, he was going to have to take a pay cut. And Pat just said, I just didn't feel like we could do that to him. And uh, so as a result, he ends up signing in Boston. Good play there by Posey. He played it Xavier. Screened by Rondo for Pierce. Little pick and roll. Boy, Kurt Thomas is really making Kevin Garnett work in that post. Garnett a little fatigued right now as he coughs up the ball. I think so, too. Seattle is 4 of 16 in the quarter. The runner by Durant. Count it and a foul. Kevin Durant, Doug just talked about, he's got to carry the offense for the team with the Seattle High 17. He's got nine coming in this third quarter, right into the teeth of the Celtic defense. It may come down to who might be the rookie of the year in the NBA to keep Seattle in this game tonight and all season long. I think we won a lot of games with our defense. Uh, offensively, we we seem a little hesitant because we know we have the shot at times, and you try to uh, make the extra pass. Uh, a lot of times, I think we overpass. And that's a great situation to be in because we have a lot of weapons out there on the floor at any given time. But it, it's a great situation to be in for all of us. Um, we're learning off each other what we do and what we don't like. So. You can only move forward, and everybody, you know, everybody stripped their egos, went out on the floor, and nobody cares about stats. So, you know, that's how we move forward thinking. And those are the big questions. You know, how would the egos be affected by big names on the roster? Well, you can see the difference statistically right there. Well, look at look at the shots last year. Ray Allen, what he took, and Paul Pierce and Garnett. All of them are taking less shots this year. But you know, when I look at the mix of this, I mean, Kevin Garnett has always been a guy who loves to pass first. Ray Allen is a guy who comes off screens, who can shoot the ball get his own shot off the pick and roll. And Pierce is a post-up guy and a slasher and a cutter. So really, they all do different things. And that's why I think it fits. I think the big question is going to be the continued growth of Rondo and then how well Posey and Eddie House and these guys can play off the bench is going to get a moving pick here on Scott Pollard. Pollard has taken the place of Kevin Garnett, who just checked out. And Doug had mentioned this a little bit early on, that perhaps Garnett was a little fatigued going against the rugged defense of Kurt Thomas. And you can see what those guys have done tonight. None of them are shooting a good percentage, but their defense and how well they play defense is continuing to keep them in this game. We're going for the alley-oop and Wilcox, and while airborne, he was whacked in a foul called Collison with Wilcox, Serbiak, Delonte West in the game, and Kevin Durant remains in there. By the way, the Celtics' worst shooting game this season, 37.5%. And tonight, the Celtics at 36.1% against the Seattle Supersonics. And just for a little punctuation mark on that, Kevin, last night in Sacramento, they had lost 11 straight games in Sacramento. Paul Pierce last night, it's the first time he'd ever won in that building in his career. Game. But they win by 20, 89 to 69. They hold Sacramento to their lowest point total of the year, and they shoot 41% basically on the road, win by 20. But they were plus 27. They were 11 of 22 from the three-point line. So timely three-point shooting in the defense is what won the game last night for them. There you see the shooting right there. By the way, Posey picked up his second personal foul moments ago. Here's trying to set a screen. Durant picks it up on the perimeter. 65-63 is the score with Boston on top by two. And here are the numbers, Doug, for teams that shoot under 45 percent boston eight and one right on top well all, that's a good team their defense their ability to shoot the three they shoot a high percentage from the foul line there's posey pierce wide open serbiak slides by pierce has really caught fire in this third quarter he's got a game high 22 with doug 11 coming here in the third quarter 
It'll be Akin West with the two guys who got this team back in it in the second quarter for the Seattle Super Sox. Durant stepped out of bounds. How often do you see that over on the sideline where the guy takes that step backwards instead of taking that step forward and steps out of bounds over there? So again, minute 54 uh, to Kevin here to go in this third quarter. We talk about finishing quarters. Yep. And Seattle, it's important for them not to lose touch here with this, to, to the, uh, the Boston Celtics. Here's Pierce with the drive as he bulldozes right into Durant, who goes down hard. And now there are 24 points on the board for Paul Pierce. By the way, Boston, three-point shooting in this quarter, four of four. With the number, as Doug said earlier, the number three team shooting the three ball this season in the NBA. West. Looking for Wilcox, started by Pollard. Shot clock at four. Look at the ball rotation. And over Posey, it's Kevin Durant. Now see, Delonte West gave him a bad pass there. He's lucky he was able to recover that, Kevin. It's so important when you swing that ball to a shooter, give him a good pass. He fumbled that shot. He was very fortunate to knock it down. 20 for Durant, 12 have come in the quarter for Kevin, the rookie. Pierce over Durant. Rebound by Wally Serbian. It is a five-point game. Here is West, who is penetrating and driving baseline to baseline back in the second quarter, and a foul called on Rondo. And Serbiak was ready to get that ball atop the circle. That's the third on Rajan Rondo. That's the 15 foul. Now watch this pass. See that down at his ankles? I mean, as a shooter, you got to go down and recover that and try to come up and make that shot. That, that leads, a bad pass leads to a low percentage shot. Doug, do you ever think about, I know, you, I, I know you think about this stuff. What this Seattle team, for instance, would have been had they been able to re-sign Rashard Lewis, had they kept Ray Allen where they might be now as opposed to where they find themselves now? Well, and the Ray Allen had talked about that. He said, you know, I think we could have been a 50-win team had, we, had, we, had I stayed here and had they re-signed Rashard Lewis and drafted Durant. Durant then would not have had the pressure to be the score he is now, but I think Sam Presti and the organization uh, made the call. They felt like that it was a time to start rebuilding. But look what these guys did last year. You know, 49% of the points, and, and these two guys carried the team. Both these guys missed a lot of games to injury last year. But I think Sam Presti felt like it was time to rebuild the team. And as a result, Ray Allen is in Boston, and he's very happy to be there on a very good team. Here's Rondo. This match now on Durant. They got Weston Pierce. Rebounded by newly instated Jeff Green. See if they get a two-for-one possession or get a quick shot. There are no fouls to give either way. Posey watching West. Rebounded by Pierce. And there's a difference on the shot clock of a couple seconds. Well, he, he wanted to get a two-for-one, but right. he really played with that ball too much. And, and now he's really going to put his team in a bind here where they're not going to get that last shot. They're going to give it to Paul Pierce here. And, Look for him trying to come off here and maybe shoot a three at the end of the quarter. Here's the Kansas Jayhawk, Paul Pierce. Working into Green. Pierce has had a great third quarter. The rebound by another Jayhawk. That's Collison. As we close out the third quarter. Well, Pierce got hot. A game-high 24. He had a couple of threes. In fact, Boston as a team has gone 7 of 15 above the arc. Pierce had 13 in the quarter. And the Celtics carry a three-point lead to the fourth on TNT. BJ, you guys wanted to slow down Kevin Garnett, but Pierce got going in the third quarter. You got to kind of pick your poison there with these guys, right? Well, again, we got to make them beat us inside. If you start doubling their guys, they're going to make three-point shots. And I like the way we're playing defensively. We just we had a couple turnovers, stepping out of bounds, making some mistakes. Our guys are competing. We'll be fine. You know, we just keep working and get some calls. We'll be all right. Your bench did a great job in the second quarter of scoring and getting you back in the game. You're going to need them to get you over the top here? We're going to need them right now. When they rest their front line guys, we got to make a move. Okay, thanks very much. We'll see you. ITA, that fast break too, Doug, for Seattle was so important in the second quarter and seemed to disappear in the third. Yeah, well, they did a nice job, Boston, in getting back. Uh, they were a little bit better not taking uh, chances with the basketball, and, and uh, they moved the ball a little bit better, and then Paul Pierce got hot there at the right time for them. The guy they're going to have to focus on right now is Eddie House spot next to three. Uh-oh, over West, put it down. So when you get into the lane, defense collapses, and, and then you get those open shots, and that's what Eddie House thrives on. They call that a two by House. 
There's Collison with Green. Delamo on the floor. West is the point. Serbiak the long distance shooter. That's the five on the floor for Seattle. Green against Posey. Pierce, look at him go back and forth, Doug, with his help defense. Well, Jeff Green's not trusting, uh, trusting his mid-range game at all. Everything he's trying to do is to get into the paint, and they're playing him for that. He's going to have to take that little mid-range jump shot. He, he can shoot that shot. I saw him take it at Georgetown. He's just got to have confidence in it. Five turnovers for the Celtics tonight. Weaving inside, rest, and he can't get it to go. That might be the one thing about Jeff Green, too. He, he's good at a lot of things, but right now, at least, not great at some of the things. I, I would agree with that. He's such an unselfish player. In, in Georgetown, played in the system, equal opportunity. The ball moved. He was a terrific passer. Really, right now, probably his defense ahead, is ahead of his offense, but, but I would like to see him trust his mid-range game more. He's really become more of a low-post player, but they're going to need him to make some jump shots, Kevin. They're, they're running off of him. They're basically playing off of him in the lane and just giving him the jump shot. You've got to take that. Pollard picked up his third personal foul. This home game for the Seattle Supersonics. 4-9, as we said before. Home in the Western Conference important. Home games for a young team like Seattle, even more important. Well, we talked about that when we did a Portland game. Well, there's a tip in by Collison. That no block out that time by James Posey. Collison sneaks in. But, to, you know, when you're a young team trying to establish your style of play, you win at home. And we saw that with Portland. They won their first road game. Uh, Charles Outlaw hit a shot in Memphis. They win by one. They come back the next night or two nights later. We do the game against Miami. They win. They haven't lost since. They've won like 11 in a row. And uh, they're the, the, the longest winning streak. And you can see now the confidence that that team is playing with. So now when they're at home, they think they're supposed to win. So, Tony Allen is in outside the house with the deceptive move. Press get the feet, count it, and a foul. Oh, that was a great looking shot by House from outside, who has been with a bunch of teams in his NBA career. The foul goes on Serbiak, and this is a three and a hit for House. Make it a two. His foot now, they're saying, was on the line. A two point hit for House, who's at the strike. Well, you talked about it, Kevin. Remember a few years ago, the role that he played for the Phoenix Suns and how well he played off their bench. He played well for New Jersey. He's played Miami and played well. So wherever he's been, uh, he's found his little niche at coming off the bench. He plays with great energy, and the coaches can trust him. West with a pass inside to Green, and a foul called on Boston. Pollard took the brunt of it. Pollard will pick up the foul. That is number four. And Green will be at the free throw line for Seattle. Scott Pollard just a little late on that rotation. The idea was right, just about a half step slow getting there. So here is Green at the free throw line, and he's always giving great effort. This team has tried to give you the great effort, and I think that's going back to one of those things, Doug, you said you were going to watch as you look at the season, one of the five things. The effort, the hustle, and that's what you want from a young team, a, a rebuilding team. Give yourself a chance to win every night especially at home more importantly learn to play in close games so you have to make plays you know so many uh, guys play on bad teams and they put up big numbers on bad teams they're never in games and they don't really understand what it takes to win in this league i think pj is doing a great job night in and night out bringing accountability to these guys and making them give effort you like the character on the team i absolutely do i sure do it's pierce from house paul pierce has had a terrific second half a game high 26 and he's got 15 Doug in the third and fourth quarters tonight it's tough to keep all three of those quiet uh, guys quiet at the same time that's why Boston is so tough to defend Delonte West continuing his nice game but you know it could be Ray Allen coming in off the bench here in a few minutes him getting hot throwing up some shots Garnett was hot in the first half ball seems to be moving better for Boston and they're getting higher shots. Right? And yes. notice, notice, instead of isolation, the ball is moving and now getting over. And now Paul Pierce is in a much better rhythm offensively. Pierce, 9 of 22 with 28. Double team was green. Jello ball. Collison over Pollard. Whitehouse collects the rebound for the Boston Celtics, who are minus five in rebounding tonight against Seattle. 
Yeah, the Boston bench got the message a little bit here, too. They're playing much better in this second half. Agreed. That's rejected by Green. Shot clock at 10. Here's Allen out of Oklahoma State, the former Big 12 Player of the Year. Had it knocked away inside, and the shot clock at 5. Pierce has seen a lot of minutes tonight. 35 to be exact, and leads the team with 28. See, the great part about that play, it all started over on the other side of the floor. There was a lot of action, and the ball swung. A lot of action. No double team help. He had an easy match up there to knock down the shot. Two seconds to shoot. House over West, and he makes it go. That's another two by House, who has come off the bench with nine for the game and seven for the fourth quarter. Green against Posey. And doubled on the play by Pollard. Celtics are back on top by nine. This equals their biggest lead tonight. As Paul Pierce continues to chip away and House hitting from the outside. And Kevin Garnett loves it, as does Ray Allen in his homecoming back to his old team in Seattle. Well, Boston up by nine. They're really starting to get their act together here offensively. Kevin, the man without the basketball, I was at the way guy away from the action is the most dangerous guy. Here's Paul Pierce. Now watch what happens there. The action on the strong side of the floor. You get a little split action, then a dribble handoff. And who ends up with it but Paul Pierce, the hot man, comes in off that screen and knocks down the jump shot. The next time down the floor, they run a misdirection. They get him in the post. So he's the hot man. They're going to him. As a result, they built the nine-point lead. But that's what makes Boston so tough. They have guys that are capable in the fourth quarter of coming up with big quarters when the game is in the balance to turn it in their favor. And they've got five assists on the five field goals in this quarter. So that has their efficiency point, Doug, that you've been talking about throughout the night. Here is House with Allen, and here is the Red Hot Pierce. Posey and Power, that is the Boston Five. Over Durant, Paul Pierce is on fire with 30 points in a game high. 30 points for Pierce in 36 minutes. And the front court scoring. Domination by the best team in the NBA record-wise, the Boston Celtics. Over the young Sonics tonight, you always talk about finishing games, Doug. Well, you can see now Seattle is uh, uh, Delonte West knocks the shot down, but Seattle has three second-half fast-break points. They're in the half court, and when they get into the half court, they struggle to score. That's what Doc Rivers said the whole game plan was, make them play half court. That's what's happened, and that's why Boston has the lead. And now this man is in Fuego. <laughs> He's on fire. So now it's at a great screen down low. So now it's him and Paul Pierce. House has come off the bench with 11 points in 10 minutes. Serbia to Durant. The late closeout by Posey. The miss three. The rebound by Thomas. And a foul called on House. He shoves down the much taller Kurt Thomas. <laughs> The ball knocked loose in a very opportune basket here for Kurt Thomas trying to get his team back in this ball game, keep him close there, down nine. And, you know, Kev, we talked about this when we had Seattle early in the year. We had him in against Phoenix, and we said probably what's going to happen this year is they're going to be very competitive for three quarters. And then come fourth quarter when teams sort of crank down the defense and when the game gets in the half court, gets a little bit tougher, they're going to struggle to finish because really only Kevin Durant is the guy right now that they can go to. Now they've got Wally Zerbiak on the floor. They come back in with Earl Watson in place of Delonte West, but so much on the shoulders of a Kevin Durant this early in his career. Remember last year it was Ray Allen and Richard Lewis who took all the big shots for this team. When you talk to some of his teammates, they say they are most impressed with how he manages his successes and how he handles the adversity. He's 19 years old. There's a pass from Garnett who just checked in the game to House. Snaps it back to KG. And he gets an offensive rebound. He's got a double-double tonight, does Garnett. Ten points and now 12 rebounds for Boston. Well, he should be fresh for the finish. I thought he got a little tired in that third quarter. Kurt Thomas really worked him hard in that low post defensively. Let's see if Kevin Garnett now has that energy we saw to start the game. So Ten points, 18 for Garnett with the 12 rebounds. Here is Pierce with a long-distance three and a foul. 
Paul Pierce having a terrific game with a game high 33 points tonight. That is a season high for Boston. And you know, you look over at PJ Carlissimo, and, and he knows he had great players when he was an assistant coach there at San Antonio. I mean, he had Parkin, uh, Parker and Duncan and Ginobili, and this is what they do. And I looked over at PJ, and he just sit on that bench like, wow. I mean, that's that's what stars do. They win games. And this is a reconstructed Boston team. Nine new players. They began their camp, in fact, in Europe this past October. Yeah, Doc Rivers told us before the game that when they were over in Rome, we thought it was the best thing they could do. They got away. They bonded. They spent time with each other. Cell phones didn't work in Europe. They had a chance to talk basketball with one another. <laughs> And this is the picture, and this is what the gift was he gave to all the players. And, and Kevin Garnett called it powerful. He said, you know, this was when we really started coming together as a team. And these kind of moments that, that mold you, that's why training camp is so important, especially when you have new players, star players, playing together for the first time. Here's Posey with a three. And a late closeout by Collison. Now Boston three-point shooting in the second half, nine of 17. And a quick timeout taken by the Seattle Supersonics. Well, now look who's on the floor for the Boston Celtics. You got Posey, Allen, House, and Pierce, all three-point shooters around Garnett. Who are you going to help off of? And as a result, Boston, plus 14, is starting to run away. Supersonics care about their community, as does the entire NBA, where caring happens. With Doug Collins, Kevin Harlan, and David Aldridge. You see the bench scoring in this game from the Celtics and the Suns. Yeah, I think the Celtics got the message at halftime from uh, Doc Rivers. They were severely outplayed by that Seattle bench. That has not been the case here in the second half, but really uh, that has helped swing the game back in Boston's favor. Here's Allen and Garnett all on the floor. It's a three by Serbiak, a little off balance and heavily guarded. Picked up by House and down court for Pierce. Guarded by Durant. Here is Garnett. Wilcox is in. Durant guarding Pierce. Rebounded by Serbia. Boston is 9 of 13 shooting in this quarter. Durant is 8 of 19. Always Serbia off the bench is 5 of 11. Notice everything is a jump shot. They yep. got nothing in the paint. And Boston's done a nice job forcing him to jump shots. A hand in the face now. No second shot opportunities. And only three fast break points here in the second half for Seattle. Good screen by Garnett. Opened up the shot of three by Posey. Defended by Thomas. And here comes Durant. Silver Pierce. It's a two for Kevin Durant. The game looks easy for him, doesn't it? I mean, smooth. it's just smooth. Yep. I mean, it's, he's just, uh, you know, he never looks like he's laboring, even when he's not shooting well. So long, Doug. My goodness, he's 9 of 20 tonight with a Sonics high 22. Here's the drive. Doug, you've seen a lot of good teams already this season. We're two months into the regular year. This Boston team has the best record right now coming into tonight at 23 and 3. Record wise, they are the best team. Are they the best team that you have seen? I, I think right now, if they played a playoff series against Detroit, I would take Detroit. Why? Experience, uh, that core four they've had together for a while. Uh, I just think that that experience, I think that Detroit, uh, you saw a little bit of their competitive fire recently when they went in and won in Boston. By two, you're uh, right. By two. Uh, I mean, here obviously are the better teams. I think the Spurs, uh, you know, are the best in the West. The team that's surprising is the Los Angeles Lakers. We talked about them. They're only one game back of the uh, Phoenix Suns now in that uh, division. They've got a great home schedule coming up here. Now they could keep moving up the ladder, but the, with Bynum improving the way he is, Kobe Bryant, it's going to be very interesting in the West. Dallas loses at home tonight to Cleveland. Kurt Thomas had picked up that foul. That's his fourth of the game. Here comes Delonte West, who is such a force in the second quarter in this game tonight. Sliding in with the reverse right there. He's got 17 points and 20 minutes coming off the bench. If he were healthy, he might be the starting guard on this team. Ray Allen is 4 of 13 tonight. Offensive rebound by House. Well, Kevin, just a little bit further about Detroit, too. I think one of the things that Detroit really has and possesses is so key in the playoffs is a terrific point guard. And I think that that'll be the 
Interesting thing with Boston when they get in the playoffs when you really have a chance to start preparing and scheming for teams and doing your game plans and those kind of things. I mean Chauncey Billups when he's playing and playing the way he can play is a tough matchup for any point guard. So Kevin Garnett was in trade rumors a lot this summer and the talk was going to Boston but they only had Pierce. He looked around probably didn't like what he saw. But when Ray Allen entered the picture, you alluded to this earlier in the broadcast, it changed his thinking about this team. Well, he's saying, wait a second, I've been in the Western Conference my whole life and, and have had a chance to get to the finals, had one shot at it. I got beat by the Lakers. Uh, I've been the MVP. If I'm going to go to the NBA Finals, it's probably going to be in the Eastern Conference. I'm never going to have my best chance. And I think right now, unless something dramatically changes, it's going to be them and the Detroit Pistons probably fighting out to see who's going to make it there. Thomas had picked up his fifth foul as he saw KG at the line. He's got 19 points and 13 rebounds. The runner by Durant. Garnett knocked it away. Rebound by Wilcox. Wilcox has really struggled tonight. Wilcox is one of five. Make it three of seven. Wilkins is one of five. So combined, Wilkins and Wilcox are four of 12. They needed more from those guys tonight. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if PJ makes a change in his starting lineup. I just think those two guys struggling uh, and Earl Watson playing out there but the three guys out there really they're not giving much offense and they're digging themselves a hole and stuff so it'll be interesting if P.J. revisits his starting lineup. West into Allen and a couple in a row now by, by Delonte West makes it a nine point game and approaching three to play in regulation. Crowd is back into the game. It's the effort we talked about this P.J. should be incredibly happy his team is hanging in there. West a long shot by Kevin Garnett from outside as he puts in his 21st point tonight with the 13 rebounds. So he was really hot in the first half, 6 of 12. Kevin only 2 of 9 in the second half. But again, I think he got a little bit tired. As you can see as he started to finish this game. That was his first field goal for Kevin Garnett since early in the third quarter. He's mentioning West. He has tied a season high with 19 for the Seattle Supersonics tonight with many plays like that all night long. That's a tough shot over the outstretched arms of Kevin Garnett. The crowd very much back into the game. And Kevin Garnett, as he's done throughout his career, quiets him and once again puts Celtics into a 11-point lead. Celtics have led by as many as 14 points tonight. Let's revisit Doug Collins' keys presented by Heineken and those wonderful pony games. Well, we talked about a quick start. Uh, Boston led by five at the end of the first quarter. And then turnover-wise, Boston only five turnovers tonight. Seattle 12. Veteran production. Paul Pierce got hot uh, in the second half, 35. You see five of seven from the three-point line. Kevin Garnett steady all night long. Really had a good first half. And then the finish, we talked about Boston's ability to close out the game and Seattle, how young they are, 26 to 18, uh, to 18 now here in the fourth quarter. So uh, you can see, Kevin, that uh, looks like Boston, unless something dramatic happens here in the last three minutes, is going to run their road record to 10 and 2. They'll have a day off and then back to back games at Utah and at the Los Angeles Lakers. It was interesting after the Lakers were handily beaten by uh, Boston earlier in the year. Derek Fisher said we'll see him at our place real soon. So that should be a fun game. Absolutely. Uh, Boston and L.A. both with good teams now. Good for the NBA. A lot of fun. There was a defensive three technical call. That's why the shot was taken moments ago at the line. David Aldridge asked a great question of the Celtics uh, player house going to the halftime and that was you know, you're getting everybody's best punch every night. I mean, you got the target squarely on your back. And to face that every night, you got to start building up some resiliency. And that gives you that competitive edge, though. That's what makes teams great is the ability to play through that. And that's why you need a bench. Because when teams come at you like that, Kevin, it takes a lot of energy to fight through those battles, especially on the road. And that's why you need guys to be able to come off that bench on a nightly basis with energy and perform for you. Watson gets his first point since the first quarter. And here is Garnett picked up by Wilcox, and the shot clock is down to five. And a shove by Wilcox, and Garnett will once again go to the free throw line. That is the third on Chris Wilcox. He began with the Clippers and is now here in Seattle. Let's take a look at the national TV schedule in the NBA. Tomorrow on NBA TV, New Orleans will play at Charlotte. Coverage begins at 7 o'clock Eastern time. And then January 4th on ESPN, the Pistons against the Raptors. 
The Heat will take on the Mavs. Covered 7 o'clock Eastern time on ESPN with Kevin Garnett at the stripe for the Boston Celtics. Is he your MVP so far, Doug, this season? Right now he is. Uh, about uh, three weeks ago, I would have probably given it to Dwight Howard. Uh, Orlando has had some slippage. Uh, they're going to have to get that edge back. Uh, I thought LeBron was right in the mix. He got hurt, and uh, now he's come back. We'll see what happens with that. And that. But Kevin Garnett and what he's meant to this team, he's changed the culture here, their defensive mentality. You know, they're just, uh, with him on the floor, with that big rebound there, they're just a totally different team. 14th rebound for Garnett with his 23 points. Inside. And Posey was hit hard. He was fouled inside. 154 to play in the fourth quarter. Thomas fouls out. Kurt Thomas is fouled out of the game. You know, I, I was thinking about Garnett when he was with the Minnesota Timberwolves. And Sam Mitchell had such a wonderful influence along with Jimmy Jam, Harris, and a lot of others in that Minneapolis community. And I'm wondering if Durant goes to someone like Thomas and finds that same kind of mentor, that leadership that a young 19-year-old probably is looking for in the NBA. I don't think there's any question. I mean, Kurt Thomas is the ultimate professional. Uh, he's seen and done it all through his years. He's, uh, I mean, people forget how athletic this uh, young, uh, this guy was when he was young. Yeah. I mean, he led the country in both scoring and rebounding. He could run and jump and do a lot of different things before he had all the leg injuries. But I would take Kurt Thomas on my team any day. At TCU is where he played. D.A., what do you have? James Posey. It's interesting how Posey got to this team. You know, Eddie House signed with this team. James Posey was thinking about going elsewhere for more money. Eddie House, who had never talked to James Posey before, cold called him. They have the same agent. He said, look, come to Boston with me. We need a bench. You're my kind of guy. Once you're coming off the bench to help me, and we can try to win a championship. And he convinced Posey to come. And there's no worry whether Danny Ainge is going to give him a finder's fee for playing assistant GM or not. Thank you, DA. 136 to play. Collison playing some defense. Celtics on top by 10. They've led by as many as 14. Sonics have had a couple of one point leads in this game. Ray Allen coming back only 4 of 13 tonight with 10. Paul Pierce has been the sharpshooter with 35 points in 42 minutes. Kevin Garnett with 23 and 14 rebounds. Three and double figures for the Sonics and 19 for Delonte West coming off the bench. The ex Celtic 19 off the bench for Seattle tonight. The guy who's been really quiet tonight has been Ray Allen. He's 4 of 13. He does have 10 points in the game. But uh, the top three players of Boston, I'm not going to call them the big three because yeah, okay. I'm going to reserve the big three for Mikhail Bird and Parrish until you. this team wins a championship. I, I think those guys are the big three of the Boston Celtics. But the three stars of Boston have combined for 68 of the 100 points, 68 percent of their offense tonight. Doug, if you were coaching a team like Seattle with the youth and, and just truly, a, you know, a rebuilt team from last year, missing your two biggest players and Lewis. And Allen, would you feel good about the way your team played tonight against the team with the best record in the NBA? Yeah, you know what? I like the fact that they they hustled, they hung in there, played with a lot of energy here. Hey. In line out of bounds play that uh, Paul Pierce is going to go to the line and get two free throws. But, but I think the one thing about it is the energy level. Just keep your energy level up for PJ to continue to be very positive to keep these young guys every day coming in the gym and getting better. I mean, that's going to be the whole goal for his team this year. You know, you know you're going to lose games, but when you go through it, yeah. it's tough. I'm sure it is. There's Pierce at the line, and he trains number 36 tonight. As we move through the night, let's take a look at what's coming up on TNT. Next, it's inside the NBA. They'll have highlights from tonight. And Cheryl Miller will sit down with Trailblazer Rising Star and last year's Rookie of the Year, Brandon Roy. Then next Thursday, it's Portland and Chicago. Doug and I will be in the Windy City. And Seattle will take on the Phoenix Suns. Yeah, Chicago will be uh, getting a chance. Our first look at them since uh, they have uh, let Scott Skiles go. Jimmy Boylan, as was announced today, he will be the interim coach for the rest of the year. And it will be interesting to see if Chicago can rally. As of right now, Chicago, Miami, New Jersey, none of those teams are in the playoffs right now after all being playoff teams last year. Plus, we'll go see our good friend Moet Gibsons. Oh, you are shameless. <laughs> do anything for that Chicago style bone in ribeye. <laughs> Listen to you. <laughs> you sound like a man who's enjoyed a couple of those in your life, huh? One time coach of the Chicago Bulls was Doug. Long outside shot. 
Well good by House and picked up by Delonte West. Well, a day off tomorrow for the Boston Celtics. Going to jam inside. A windmill job by Wilcox. And Doug just talked about what they've got coming up. This is the first real road trip this team has been on, the first real test. The first part of their schedule was very easy, as good as any single team Doug had the entire beginning of the year. Well, and Boston did what they were supposed to do. They won those games. So yep. now you're going to be challenged, and you start finding out where you are, and Doc Rivers will be able to assess his team, what the weaknesses are, what they have to continue to do, get better. And that's why it's important you go out on these trips, and there it is, Saturday at Utah, Sunday at the uh, Lakers then Wednesday at Houston, and then uh, versus Memphis. So five of the next eight games on the road. Uh, but Boston has shown uh, all year long they've been able to meet the challenge. This will be their 10th road win of the year, 10 and 2. And in December, they'll go to 11 and 1 after a 13 and 2 November. With the win tonight, they'll go to 11 and 1 in December. Fourth consecutive win overall, and six in a row on the road. Boston has hit their last eight free throws, building their lead to 10 over the Sonics on TNT. one hundred four ninety four. the Boston Celtics will up their record to 24-3. And there have been a lot of teams that have had great starts to a season like this. Uh, you know, you go back to the uh, Chicago team back in the mid-90s, New York, the Knicks back in the 69 season Philadelphia back in 66 a lot of teams have been in this rarefied air that Garnett and Pierce and Allen find themselves in with the Boston Celtics house is watching Watson it's a two-point try and picked up by Posey Scalabrini is in Brian Scalabrini out of USC has come in the game first time that's one of my favorite guys, Brian Scalabrini. He is a funny guy yeah. to be around. Great guy to have on your team. I didn't see Danny Ames here tonight, but I'm sure he was watching back in Boston. There's a drive by Tony Allen. And Danny, want to say happy holidays to you and your wonderful family. Durant, Wilcox. Had he been here, would have had you, Doc. And Danny is is uh, TNT announcers at one time or you, another. You broke us all in. Yeah, <laughs> well, not you. <laughs> hey, the Celtics, Doug, only had a season low five turnovers. Well, they took care of the ball. They did not shoot a height percentage, but Paul Pierce got hot at the right time. The bench came alive for Boston in the second half, and just too much firepower for Boston tonight in the fourth quarter. Paul Pierce tonight with. 37 points in 43 minutes. His second half was terrific. And right now he is standing by with our David Aldridge. Well, we had you at halftime, but you were too good in the second half. I had to get you for two. What, what happened out there? Well, we got our composure. You know, we just got to keep understanding we're going to get everybody's best shot. We just kept our composure, kept playing, kept playing. You know, it's tough when you're on the road, back to back. Uh, we got to find ways to win. Tonight, you know, Seattle, uh, they came with their A game, and we just found ways to win. You got a great performance from Eddie House in the second half. Their bench had outscored yours by a lot in the first half. What happened there? Well, you know, D West and uh, Zerviak was going to come in. They were fired up for this game. Uh, you know, but Eddie House did a tremendous job off the bench. He knocked down some shots, kept the defense honest, and it, and it really opened up my game there in the second half. Well, congratulations. Keep, see you on the road. Thank you. Back to you, Kevin. Mm -hmm. All right, D.A., thank you very much. Our producer tonight has been Jeremy Levin. Our director has been Lonnie Dale. Special thanks.